This is probably one of the most frightening of all of the Gospels. Be not afraid. What you have heard, preach it from the housetops. No one can harm you. What a message that is for those who are commissioned to preach the Gospel. And what a message it is for those who claim to live out the Gospel in their lives. We live at a time when there is chaos, anarchy, rebellion, and lawlessness in our land. Many people wonder why, and many people wonder what can be done. Well, let me tell you why. You may have heard that this afternoon throughout the country in major cities, Satanists are going to march, proclaiming the kingdom of Satan. When there is hatred, when there is lawlessness, Satan is present. As a matter of fact, When you read John's Gospel, Satan is referred to as the man of lawlessness, no law. But what law is being referred to? He is the lawless one rebelling against whose law? God's law. God's law. Gradually, our country has drifted further and further away from God's law. And what we see happening in our streets is the result of lawlessness. But a lawlessness that has very deep metaphysical roots. The metaphysical root is in Satan himself, the lawless one, who breeds hatred, who breeds anger and breeds division. Jesus came to bring people together. The lawless one comes to separate people. And that's what's happening now in our country. People are being divided. And everybody believes that they have a right to this and a right to that. But when we talk about our rights, we must also talk about our obligations. And obligations are not being fulfilled, especially obligations to the family. Many sociologists today, of course, not very popular sociologists or psychologists will tell us that a good deal of the problems that we have today in society is because of the breakdown of the family. And some will go so far to say, and this should come as no shock, it's because of fatherlessness. No father present in the home. How have we come to this point? Well, because God's law has been ignored. It's been superseded by man's laws, by the laws of the state, by the laws of the Supreme Court, where people no longer know what God's law is as proclaimed in the Scriptures where they no longer know the law that existed prior to civil society and prior to the state, the natural law. Let me give you some examples of the breakdown. Because, as I said, the state now determines what 
the rules and regulations are for good human living. I'll begin with Roe v. Wade, 1973. Legitimizes, legalizes abortion. People say to me sometimes, Father, why is abortion an issue that's continually being fought over? I'll tell you why. It's fundamental. It's a fundamental issue. Why? I call it a wedge issue. Because once we can determine who is a person and who can live and who can die, where does it stop? And why do you have claims of racism today? Because some people do not deem people who are different, maybe in color, maybe nationality, or people with certain handicaps. We have rights then over them to determine who lives and who dies. It's fundamental. And the state then says that we have a right to determine who's a person and who's not a person. To the point now where even infanticide is being perpetrated, children born can be eliminated because they're not considered to be valuable to society. Fundamental, the wedge issue. And then from there, what happens next? Not too long ago, we had Supreme Court tell us in Obersfeld that there is now gay marriage. From time immemorial, marriage is between a man and a woman. It's the word of God. God created the male and female and told them to, to reproduce. But marriage no longer is considered to be a sacred institution, one given to us by God and reflected in the natural law and reflected for thousands of years in the common law, but now it's something that we create. It no longer has to do with children. It's how I feel, what I like, what gives me pleasure. And so we redefine marriage. It's no longer one man, one woman, with the responsibility of having children and raising those children. Supreme Court says, do your own thing. Not only are they wrong, but what they did is not even legal. Why? Laws are made by the legislature of the different states. But let's not even go there. A few days ago this week, Supreme Court says that the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which banned discrimination between the sexes, man and woman, now applies to LGBT plus, Q plus. So there are no longer just two sexes, male or female. There are many sexes. And they take a law that had nothing to do with LGBTQ+, because they didn't even know about it in 1964, and they broadly apply that law. What does it do? What does it do? First of all, on the very practical level, it's very dangerous to women's athletics. You could now have a, a boy who says he's a girl compete with girls on girls' teams. Who's going to win? Wrestling. Basketball, swimming. But it goes further than that. Because if the law is read as it stands now, interpreted by the courts, it says this that anyone who discriminates against someone who is LGBTQ, even for religious reasons, they could be considered in violation of civil rights. And that affects the churches and the preaching of the gospel. That's what it does. Oh, they'll say, but there can be accommodations. Oh, yeah. Maybe they'll try in the beginning, but the accommodations will not last. And those who do not obey and go along with what the state says sex is, 
they will be the criminals. They'll be the ones who are going to be prosecuted and persecuted. Now, this is an example of lawlessness. Why? It contradicts God's law. It contradicts human law. It contradicts common sense. And yet now, everything seems to be okay. But basically, you know what it does? It endangers souls. It endangers souls, and nobody talks about that. The morality, which contradicts the scriptures, which contradicts 4,000 years of Judeo-Christian teaching. At the moment, what it has done, it has wreaked family life into chaos. It has destroyed our common sense of family and what a family is supposed to be and what a family is supposed to do. The family protects us from the state. The church is established to help protect the family, to protect human life. And yet now the church itself will be suspect and threatened. And mark my words, it will happen. Without the family, we have no protection. Without the family, we have no protection. Because it's a buffer zone between us and the state, and it guards children, and it guards husband, and it guards wife. There is a solution. But it's a long-term solution. It's not going to happen overnight. Believe me, I doubt that any of us will see a solution in our lifetime. But it rests with fatherhood. And today's Father's Day, and it does rest with fatherhood. Fatherhood has become almost a joke in our society because men are not taking their responsibilities to be fathers seriously. I said earlier, fatherlessness is one of the reasons that we have this breakdown in society, troubled and insecure children, and an increase of crime and an increase of emotional and mental instability. And then who steps in and tells us what's right and what's wrong? The state? The state added to it. It's what they learn in school. Do your own thing. Do what feels good. There are many sexes. You can kill babies. It's the law. It's the lawless one. So what do we do? Remember what I'm telling you. Pass it on to your children and to your grandchildren. Number one, men must take responsibility for being good fathers. If they father a child, they are responsible for that child. Number one. Number two, marriage is a sacred institution. It's ordained by God. Divorce is evil. It causes evil. It's destructive to souls and it's destructive to children. Many children are full of anti-anxiety medications because of a breakup in the home. No father present. Fathers must act as the head of the household and take responsibility for taking care of the family and making sure that the marriage stays intact. Number three, fathers must make sure that their children are properly educated. We can no longer trust a public school system. If we do use the public schools, 
Fathers must make it their responsibility to know what is being taught and to instruct their children properly and privately at home. That's what a father is supposed to do. You take responsibility for instructing the children. And don't entrust it to a school board. The third thing is this. Fathers must be holy men. They must be holy men. They must be men who live their faith according to Scripture, who role model for their children, who go to church, and who obey God's laws. Today we live in a society that disrespects our fathers. Fathers must once again reassert themselves in the life of their family. And when they do this, then they fulfill the most important part of their job. It's not just raising the children to be successful in this world, but it is to save their immortal souls because God's law supersedes human law. The material world will ultimately pass away, but the soul lives forever. And so, gentlemen, I implore you, imitate God the Father. Show forth his love, give good example, and then you will become real heroes to your family. God love you.